Hey, Woken Free Nation. Newsly is an audio app for iOS and Android. It picks up web articles about the most trending topics on the web at any given moment and reads them to you in a natural human voice. For the first time in the history of the internet, the entire web becomes listenable. Browse articles from topics you choose and start playing. Stop scrolling. Start listening. You can follow any topic as specific as you like, from sports, science, to Bitcoin, or even one of your favorite celebrities. It will find you the latest articles and read them to you aloud. And they have podcasts as well. Explore trending podcasts from over 50 countries. Our podcast, Woken Free, is there too. Now, let's get into the episode. Hi, it's Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of Woke and Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 254th episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything important to us, you, the world, and nothing is off the table. This week, we are asking the question, is work-life balance really possible? But before we dive into this subject, there's a couple of things to go over. First, have you downloaded this episode on WokenFree.com? We definitely appreciate every listen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But please download. And you need the Podbean app to be able to download and also be able to share your comments. And we want to hear from you every single week. We have a new topic. We want to hear from you. So make sure you go to WokenFree.com. And not only listen, but download the app, the Podbean app, so that you can share your comments. Now, if you are in a position where you cannot download new apps onto the device you listen to podcasts on, a couple of tears are shed. But what you can do is go to WokenFree.com, go on the Listen tab, and then you can share your support on whatever platform makes sense for you. So we're on iTunes, we're on TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, tons of places, 30 plus places. It's a woken free world. So make sure you follow and subscribe to wherever we are and where, what, what other platforms you like to listen to podcasts on. Now on WokenFree.com, you can also click to subscribe to follow the show through the Podbean app. And on social, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn at Woken Free. And then if you have 90 seconds, which really isn't a question, but more just a statement, uh, we would love for you to review the show. So again, go to WokenFree.com, go in the Listen tab, and then pick your platform of choice where you want to review the show at. Kicking it to you, Khalil. Are you sure? Yes, sir. All right. I guess I can take over, but, you know, I'm just doing it as a favor to you. Wonderful. So I hope that that's acceptable. Exactly. All right. And I think the listeners know what happens now. We Mm -hmm. start off by sharing a little bit about ourselves. This week we're asking, would you rather be trapped on a desert island with your significant other or a survivalist? So like a random person who's a survivalist. Yeah, there's actually, I know there's a show where they they show. No, there's a different show Um, where they talk about like, what would you do versus what the survivor tells you to do. Naked and afraid. (laughs) <laughs> I, have, I have no clue what the name is, but it, it's a real show. I don't know the name. I mean, I, I would have to look it up. Oh, I'm I just thought so about it. Naked and Afraid doesn't have any answer. of that. Oh, goodness. Naked and Afraid question. doesn't have that. So, so. does this survivalist have clothing? <laughs> <laughs> that I'm shouldn't curious. matter. It actually does. <laughs> it does matter for you if they have yeah. clothing. Well, yeah. if they're a survivalist, they must have clothing, okay, or else cool. they're not a survivalist. That would tell you that was a, that's a tip off. I mean, I then you know that's the Joker. This then. is a question where if you don't say your your spouse, <laughs> your spouse is going to attack you. Like they're going to be. Yeah, so but what if you want to live though? Ouch. No, well, the question is, do you want to live or just die with your spouse? Do you want to eat your spouse or not, essentially? Because <laughs> the truth is, most likely you're gonna you're gonna die with your spouse. That's the How truth. How pleasant. No, but I'm just saying that's what this. That's so what the question is really digging at. Positive mindset right now. Th- that, that's what I think the question's getting at. I'm yeah. not saying that's my answer. I'm just telling you what the, the question. The question is. to me is speaking to: okay. Do you want to spend forever <laughs> with you your that? spouse or not? Oh, I see. Because yeah. I mean, technically, you're trapped on the, the island. Yeah, so it's kind of like if you oh, don't choose your spouse, you're jacked up. <laughs> Like, but the thing is, I'll I mean, take someone else for two hundred, Alex. Like, all right, because you know, I was thinking of kind of like I, I've never seen it, but I was thinking of the movie like Castaway. Oh, okay. 
So, so that wasn't a choice if you watched no, the no, film. No, no, but I'm saying in, in <laughs> Castaway, doesn't, eventually the person gets rescued, right? Correct. So that I was thinking of the, like that. The person. I Tom don't know Hanks. who the person is. I mean, yeah, Tom, but I don't know what his name is. His name is Luke or something in that. Wilson? He calls the ball the Wilson. Ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, it's a weird movie, but either way, it's he gets rescued. Film. But think of it. So, I mean, this question's open. I mean, maybe you're trapped forever. If you're trapped oh, forever, God. then I didn't say trapped forever. Though. I, I thought this was trapped with the. A possibility of escape. Oh, okay. That was the intentionality behind it. Well, no, that's not the intentionality. I that's mean, just what I thought like about I said, it. You it, can think of it any way you want. I don't I'm know. not. This survivalist, this term it sounds really scary. This person Why is, is a stranger. I don't know who this person is. This person makes sure you live the most life so that you live So could it be someone you know, or is it a complete stranger? You don't know a survivalist, so don't even lie. <laughs> You're a shameful. <laughs> and I don't either, though, so I'm not going to lie. I don't know if we can categorize all of the yes, people we in do. our life. Yes, we do. We know there's nobody in our life that's a survivalist. We can, I can guarantee you that. I, that, I mean, that's not their job title, I Camille, going, No, but I'm but, saying they don't know that. But, but they, they might be a survivalist in actual practice. No, a survivalist. Like, kind of like if we were stuck what? on the island with a family member who is not necessarily a survivalist, but they know how to survive and they help keep that's us alive. That's not a survivalist. A survivalist knows how to survive. So they have a t-shirt and everything? I mean, no, what but you- a survivalist. <laughs> Survivalist is somebody who knows how to go like hunting and knows how to travel the woods, knows how to films. make fires, knows how to like make potable water. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. A we haven't asked all of the people in our life these questions. You, you so think there's family, point. family and friends that yeah, we have I'm zero family sure. and friends I, that I have that skill quality. Thing, so. <laughs> no, but you should think about it. You could just think about what it. What I'm real trying quickly. to say no is our friends that. and family listen to this, so you might just be. It's like, not offensive. Really I don't. I'm not a survivalist either. I mean, you, they can lie and they can say, yeah, they went camping. Just because you go camping a hundred times doesn't make you a survivalist either. And you're talking smack. No, because people might say that. Because you're just out. No, I didn't say my. What's your answer though? My answer has to be you because otherwise you'll attack me so that's the reason i mean yes. that's not okay that's my i answer. mean that's your answer i wouldn't change it because that's yeah, I know you're what not you choose me. <laughs> no this is this and this is easy it's because you got to think about it like what what are you living for you want to live with this survivalist who's like has a knife at the like i said wearing on do the you or tip? do you not want to eat your spouse and your answer will be i'll, I'll eat my spouse for 200 no that doesn't make any sense <laughs> i'm not doing that i'm definitely choosing spouse why would you want to be with a survival is this random stranger you don't know it's weird well like i said you put it in a category where it's like yeah what? it's weird yeah it seems scary like what if the survivalist is really like a secret killer or no something? then like, but it's i mean crazy. i don't think the question was getting toward the survivalists usually don't want to kill another person that's the funny thing <laughs> no it's it's not like these movies like michael myers so, is on the other eye. <laughs> Of yeah, it's not like any of the you know these doomsday yeah. movies. The survivalist actually wants to keep everybody alive, so they're gonna want to keep you alive. But I don't care about that if you're not with your spouse. I mean, what's the point? It doesn't make any so sense. So live or die, you're chained to me. You're suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you could live a better life trapped on an island with your spouse than not. Unless okay. I mean you're a person who lived with your spouse during COVID and you realized that wasn't but the you person can't for stand you. And be like, oh, I can't stand you. Because yeah, a lot of people mm, realize they said spirit like COVID. <laughs> taught them a lesson. See, that I was know. funny. COVID was a trapped I island know. for a lot of people. <laughs> they were like, why are you still here? Because I live here. Ooh, that's a shame. Because <laughs> they looked at me like, aren't you supposed to leave now? No, it's it's locked down. As you've been joking, we've been social distancing for uh, 17 plus years. So, <laughs> exactly. We, for us, we're extreme homebodies. So, yeah. Yeah, we understand. COVID, we understand the COVID assignment. was just a regular Thursday for two years. I mean, it didn't, it didn't make a dang difference for us. But, COVID didn't affect I mean, us. I think the most this difficult part was, yeah, having to just kind of follow through with all these restrictions just because... Uh, you know, those masks can get uncomfortable, but we're not definitely going to not open up that rabbit hole for to, for this episode. So, well, but we I mean, do, you said that, but there, I just got to admit it because there's, there's a good song about it. It's a Beauty and the Beast song that I shared oh, with everybody. Just wear your mask, wear yeah, your mask. Wear That's your all mask. that we oh, ask. Yeah. No, of course. <laughs> to the Be My no, Guest we song. Have to, we have to make sure people are safe and stuff. <laughs> but, but I mean, they, no, I know now. But I do like different. the fashion forward mask that I will throw out there. And I, now it's I different. Love. I mean, in terms of mask, it's a choice now. It's not. If it's mandated, though, just do it. But if it's not mandated, it's your Try to make good choices, everyone. Yes. And with that, yeah. All way well with that, because you you forgot we're talking about, you know, balance, right? Because if you're on an island, you want to balance your life with what you're working on. Exactly. Wouldn't you want to do that? You don't want to just be on the island living. You want to balance work and life. 
Two out of ten. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what kind of sloppy transition. Yeah, you messed me up because I was gonna. You, you were talking about COVID, and I was gonna talk about how there was a work life balance there because you had to figure that out. Because now work and life have been brought to the same. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> so, but the real, the truth was, we it, it was definitely a good segue, but mm-hmm. you definitely interrupted it. How how fabulous for me! So <laughs> with that, the question of the episode is: Is work life balance really possible? So shoot it off, sir. Okay, even though I didn't get my segue that I mm-hmm. desired, you did two out of ten. Keep going. Could have been a lot higher. That's <laughs> it's a very shame. I'm a Virgo. Keep it going. Oh man. <laughs> well. You know what I I say about this question is it depends on the mm-hmm. person. So I think mm-hmm. yeah, of course it's possible, but people need to really decide what they want more of because some people they want to do the work thing. They think mm-hmm. they just dive themselves into their work and that's what is fulfilling for them. But there's yeah. other people where you know they have a lot of family obligations, so they might not actually be prepared to throw themselves into their work like they might just say, "Hey, you know, I got to take care of this person who's a little bit sickly or something and Mm -hmm. that that takes over their life and i don't know maybe that can actually hurt their their work life actually so yeah i think it really just depends on the person if you have lots Mm -hmm. of family activities i think then you probably should rethink doing those unpaid overtime hours at work because if they're exempt employees yeah Mm -hmm. yeah because then it you know you gotta just you gotta like prioritize and say, Hey, family first, but mm. I don't, I don't know. It's, I think it's definitely possible. I just think it's a lot of people, it, it depends yeah. on the kind of life that people are in. If they have mm-hmm. it, like, like I said, if they have responsibilities at home, they got to take care of that. If not, then maybe they want to go to work more and do more and get their employer rich. But mm. the better thing is probably to try to balance it out, which is, it's kind of, mm-hmm. it's kind of tough. I mean, Technically, I guess if you want to be, I mean, if you want to be a hundred percent true, you can never get it completely balanced. There's going to be one's going to be well, more always prioritized than the other. You have a it's, it's never like or, it's fifty. But, yeah. but I would say it would never be fifty fifty. Like fifty percent of my time is work. Fifty percent of my yeah. time is home. It, it never would be that. But well, it's it can more be, like a sixty forty. Yeah, 70, 30 and maybe it changes yeah. depending on the month and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But I just think it should not be a thing where it's like ninety ten. That is, and people imbalanced. definitely do that where Correct. it's like ninety ten and something suffers. And some people actually make choices to choose a ninety ten orientation for their life. Right? They some? say, yeah, like I think people, all. I don't know if everyone is choosing so to be I'm in I'm saying balance. if you have a 90-10, that's your choice, I'm saying. You're saying it's not. Well, so this is where, and this is why we have to create content around radical self-awareness. I don't know if everyone would agree to the fact that they are choosing that 90-10 orientation. I think they're saying, oh, say, that's well, what, that's what, this is what my job requires, right? That's but what the like universe gave them. You chose that job, <laughs> and you chose... To keep that employer, right? Like you, you, everything was intentional, but I don't know if everyone's fully ready to accept that for themselves. But yeah, yes, it and it's is usually, a and, and I think when it's ever it's ninety ten, it's usually ninety ten for the work. Oh yeah, b- versus life. Because if it's yeah. ninety for the life versus, I mean, work family, and you're ten, yeah. It, mm-hmm. Like yeah, if family is ninety and work is ten, you have a part time job. <laughs> I mean, you're, usually, you're not hardly. Uh, I mean, unless, but there might be a job where I don't know. You are like maybe you have to like gather up the golf balls on a mini golf course, something like that. You just real flavored and <laughs> no, real out try, of control right now. No, I'm trying to think of a job where they don't I'm like not even, rage you too much. Okay, I mean, so they're not on up to you. everydayhealth.com, <laughs> shameful. I'm just trying to think of There's something. There's an article where a doctor, I believe what, Christine Carter, PhD, says the following. Uh, well, actually, there's two. So Jeffrey Pfeffer a professor of organizational behavior at Stanford University Graduate School of Business in California and the author of the book Dying for a Paycheck said, you can overload people if the requirements they have from one role, such as one at work, conflict with the demands of another role, such as that of a parent. And then Christine Carter, PhD, a senior leader at Better Up and a sociologist and senior fellow at the Greater Good Science Center at the University of California in Berkeley, uh, who studies happiness and productivity, says the idea is to live in a way that we feel productive and not burned out at work and that we have a sense of fulfillment at home and in our personal lives. So 
based on those comments, I, uh, I would agree with you that there is a lot of subjectivity that comes into the analysis of what balance looks like, because balance for you is going to be different from me, which is going to be different from KJ, which is going to be different from someone else. Uh, uh, and then you probably can add in like cultural nuance, gender, socioeconomic factors. I think there's a lot of factors that are going to make what balance looks like in a, in a, nuanced way that you can't just say it's 50 50 but for me like it 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 probably i would say i would feel good at 60 40 uh 60 being work 40 being family for monday through friday but on saturday sunday i definitely would say i want it more around you know 70 30 family work and and so it's it's it and also it's going to shift in different stages you are in your career in your in your family obligations where you are as a parent if you are a parent so there's a lot of different factors but i also would agree yes that it is really possible but yeah. it is a nuanced uh assessment yeah i think it depends on the person, really. Mm-hmm. What are the biggest obstacles to work-life balance? So on smallbiztrends.com, they shared some really helpful things to keep in mind. And I like I personally was like, ooh, ouch. So some things that stand in the way of people having work-life balance include being a perfectionist. When you're way too hard on yourself and you're kind of doing this blame game with yourself, not helpful. Uh, giving people <laughs> 24-7 access to you. Boundaries oh, yes. are helpful, whether it's your boss or a client uh, or uh, even your own child you have to be able to say no and you have to be able to tell people like i need time and space for myself even and when some jobs are up front and tell you that you're on the demand they can call you at any so time then if you accept that <laughs> then you've accepted those terms of having an imbalance and unhealthy toxic work environment <laughs> for yourself because everyone needs time off everyone needs to be able to use the bathroom <laughs> everyone needs to be able to have breath and space for bad because you even know that there's some jobs Jobs where during the work I mean, hours, I guess the only they don't want you to use the bathroom either. Can't have boundaries, or maybe astronauts, right? Like people where it's no, really, they get diapers. I guess I'm not addressing that. <laughs> <So> <laughs> there are certain maybe parameters There's, that's not where one, that's though. just really challenging. I'm trying to think of one, but though. you know, even you know, hmm. doctors or like I remember when my mom, my mom was an OR technician, and she said that sometimes she'd be in the OR room for like six hours at a time. Like that's and you can't really, use the bathroom, and you right? Because the room is if you open it up you're gonna allow bugs and micro and contaminate yeah so you know when surgeries are happening sometimes oh, 12 funny. hour surgeries they cannot so, leave <laughs> so you know they, they should use the there's special laboratories where it's like a positive airflow where even if you open the doors nothing can well, get in now this was many years ago when we, oh, maybe many years ago when we were children maybe so they've changed the I'm room I'm not sure how but I don't how know if they OR use it tech, like, a, like OR surgeries are happening now oh, okay. uh, maybe they have I mean, a better in our, when I had a C-section I don't I think everyone in the room stayed in the room until the end but it wasn't that long i mean right? like <laughs> yeah well that yeah that wasn't so, that long but i'm saying if it's six hours and you might I mean, want people yeah, not to you, make a mistake people don't want to you know soil themselves <laughs> like well that's it but is, soil is easy to take care of i told you the diaper that, i'm not, not a, addressing this so that's not a problem you just got to think of like what if someone's just tired of standing though they can't Correct. just go and take a break i mean man. it's just it's challenging so i don't know six that, hours isn't good uh reacting to everything immediately i thought that was really interesting too uh, i definitely <laughs> That's pretty funny. I'm a person who but has true. that tendency, and sometimes you have to pause, take a deep breath, think about it, reflect before making taking action. The knee jerk reaction, though. correct? It's, exactly. It references you need to pause that. Don't do that. On that. Uh, mistaking busyness for productivity, uh, and then also living hmm. in one world when you should be in the other. So <laughs> I guess this is kind of a lack of understanding your priorities and not in purposely and intentionally orienting your life around those things. So I thought those were really helpful. How about you? I just want to say that mistaking busyness for productivity, that's a key point because a lot of, a lot of like bosses and supervisors will see you busy and they're like, Oh yeah, you're productive. They just, they Mm -hmm. just want to see you busy. Even if you're not getting anything really done, they don't care. They just want to see you busy. And that to me is a crazy thing. Who cares? That doesn't make any sense. It's about productivity and what are you actually Productivity is the most important thing. I mean, for a business at least, you want, (laughs) you want productivity. That's what keeps you in business. So. That is definitely a key thing. You're now listening to Woke and Free. Woke and Free. Woke and Free. Woke and Free. A podcast that keeps it real and honest. Other things that come up for work-life balance, and that's while... Obstacles, right? Yeah. yeah, Mm -hmm. So the thing is, while working, 
I think sometimes the employer can actually give you unreasonable deadlines and mm. those deadlines can make a conflict with certain obligations you have at home. So mm -hmm. you got to realize like, Hey, maybe I can't do that. And you got to try to figure that out. Maybe express that to the employer. Mm -hmm. Another thing is a, a crazy thing is employers will expect you to fulfill those conflicts with, by working overtime, but don't document it. So I think that's well. Kind of it depends. Up. It depends on the type. Again, you get into classification of like exempt versus non-exempt. If you're exempt, then your salary. Then it doesn't matter. You can work 100 hours or 40 yeah. hours. You're still paid your salary. But there are some jobs yeah. that pay even exempt people over time. There are some so, that see, offer that. Yeah. So that's a be, you have to know your status. Yeah, you definitely got to know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I yeah, I mean, I know a salary person. They they're expected. Typically, yeah. yeah they yeah. usually expected to complete their work. You know, well, however many hours it takes. More it takes. Than 40, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I just know some jobs, they'll be like, hey, you know, even if you, but, but what, what's funny is, is kind of like, what if you have, so there's jobs that where you document the time that you spend on a thing. And mm -hmm. since you're exempt, they want you to enter a certain amount of hours, but technically you work more than those hours. So yep. to mm -hmm. me, that seems like false reporting. So isn't that funny? <laughs> and that does happen where it's like, yeah, these are hours based and they say, Hey, you can't I enter think, again, more than these a hours. Statement. It depends on how seems the like back end of the it system seems like works. A little, uh, well, that seems like, I don't know what well, you would call it. it. It's shady how though. Well, uh, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I just say that for any so, employer that says, as said by Khalil. Nurse, yeah. I'm yes, saying it's not woken free, but yeah. I'm just saying mm -hmm. if any employer says, all right, you're, even if you're exempt, you, you got to work, whatever so many hours but we're gonna document we're gonna recording. document your yeah. hours for this project no matter how many hours you put on it yeah. it's gotta still come to just 40 i think that's a little i mean i don't want to say fraud but that's crazy to me so what what <laughs> that's what, so nuts. when that is if that's the and rule that right happens then, then you need to play the, rule, the, the game accordingly and so you should be orienting your own hours to be within that 40 hour frame right frame because yeah you are I gonna you you're gonna feel a certain kind of way if you work 60 and you can only report 40 so, but, but I'm, yeah. i mean you're saying feelings but the what i so so what I'm getting at of the problem is, is these timesheet things, these hours go towards like saying, Hey, how long it should, how like, long does it take, how long does it take like, those are wrong so and so employee yeah. to complete this? And they look at that and it's like, that's not true, man. Yeah. So now they say, all right, you can complete it within this so amount of time. So you know what time. it should be. There that's, should be I think probably that's the dumbest two thing. reporting. So from a project crazy, management man. perspective, there should be reporting as to like, what was the actual time it yeah, really took actual. for you versus your timesheet. Versus just a timesheet. Your timesheet, yeah. I get it. Timesheet could be if, anything. If it needs Who to cares? be 40 from a back end perspective, then it needs to be 40, but actual project management should be tracking hours. Yeah, it should track actual hours work account the actual hours yeah because maybe you have to you know, put on the timesheet 40 but it really took you 75 if that should yeah, be see? known so going forward it can be tracked and appropriately priced out for how long it takes to do something yeah yeah i think that should be a steadfast rule that companies That's should follow point. that yeah. to me is crazy not to That's a good point yeah hey then that and stuff like that can wor ruin the work life balance because mm, you're spending now more true. time at home and I mean on on the job than at home because mm -hmm. you're trying to get this thing complete and then you feel a little salty because you don't even get to tell the truth you just pretend like yeah I I finished it in my mm -hmm. dedicated time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ultimately now that leads me to the question of what are your best tips for having or creating work life balance. Well, number one is definitely just do what makes you happy because mm, I don't know what you're much. living life for. If yeah. You just, are you living to be sad or <laughs> you're living for some deity? I don't know. You just, I think you should okay, live to be on. happy, okay. but I'm just saying it's the truth. You could live for a deity, but I, I think you should live to be happy or, or just strive towards happiness. Cause yeah. again, I tell you all the time, it, it might be funny, but you, you don't want to be too happy because then that's, it's crazy. You need like, you need contrast you and need something a little different your depression <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you don't want to be too happy that's yeah, crazy that's then, too much no because yeah. then you're all like cloud nine and you yeah. just think you're untouchable God forbid you're yeah. too happy. no but yeah. then you're untouchable it doesn't yeah, make sense exactly. you got to bring yourself down and you got to get experience stay everything. humble guys <laughs> <laughs> i say experience it experience all the feelings it feels good when you go up and down yeah. up and down enjoy like a roller that roller coaster you know that is life because <laughs> all right imagine a roller coaster and it's just flat no one's going to get on that ride yeah no one is. It's, exactly. it's it's nothing, and it doesn't accelerate. Even if dinosaurs are coming towards you, definitely not. No okay. one's. People are going to hate that because they love dinosaurs. They want to kiss them. Uh, not if there's sharp teeth coming towards <laughs> your face. They're going <laughs> to high five the T Rex exactly. with the little hand. They're going to say Hi. high five. Okay. People aren't scared of dinosaurs. So excited. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not scared of most dinosaurs. And the next thing is that you should use your resources because if you do that, then 
maybe you won't be overloaded at work is what I think. And even in your home life, you can mm-hmm. use your resources. Don't try to take on everything yourself. Yep. The third thing is it's it kind of ties to the second one is ask for help when needed. And mm. that goes for at work and home because people hard. can assist you, you know. It's, if there's <laughs> someone to <laughs> assist and or is willing to provide assistance, yeah. Yeah, that's depends on your household. True. Depends on the people in your yeah, life. Yeah, it depends, and, and it depends what you're asking if for. If you're right? talking about non-paid staff, like, <laughs> but it depends people, what you're asking yeah. for too. Because some people, you, like, you might have thirty people at home, but what if none of them know how to cook? Then they can't help that's you cook, a right? Sad situation. <laughs> <laughs> All they know is know ramen noodles. Of, yeah, yeah, I don't know what kind of disaster. So that <laughs> it's is possible that thirty people can't cook at home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't. What is it, a college dorm? Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it could be that. It could be a halfway home. You never know. Okay. Wow. Keep going. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. I'm just Come saying. What it, I don't know. It could be different stuff. Next thing is that you have to know your goals. So you want to know what you're striving for. That makes it easier to decide how to balance things out. And the last thing that I think about is that you need to calendar important events because mm. that's how you'll be able to get things done. And see if that that everything can kind of balance each other out because you don't want to like plan to do something and then other stuff comes up because you didn't know you had this other event going on. So just have re- everything in the calendar so you know there's no conflicts. Otherwise, you can overload yourself. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So my tips are as follows. If you are trying to really have work-life balance in your life, you should do the following. You need to give up on expectation. Expectations are the thief of joy. Go with the flow, essentially. Uh, things may likely be different in reality than what you thought they were going to be in your mind. That's okay. Everything happens specifically how it needs to happen for the life lesson or for the opportunity. Just go with it. Next, learn from those who have shared experience with you that are willing to impart their knowledge and do it in a positive way. So, you know, if someone wants to tell you how everything goes, but it's from a negative lens or from a toxic perspective, you don't need that in your life. But if you have people in your life where you can start to grow your network to be able to say, yeah, motherhood is hard, but if you're willing to do X, Y, Z, this is how it can get better. Those are, those are meaningful opportunities for you to learn from others who walk that same path as yours. Yeah. And then also remember your why, your fundamental why of why you do what you do, who you are each and every day is going to help drive you closer to helping you have that foundation of like, why, why are you doing what you're doing in your job? Why are you doing what you're doing in your personal life? Why do both of those matter? What do you want to accomplish? The why drives everything and give yourself grace. Today might be a great day. Tomorrow might be not so great. Again, every new day is a new opportunity to win, a new opportunity to learn, and a new opportunity to be appreciative and grateful for the life that you have, no matter what the ups and downs are in it. And then, of course, please pay attention to what's working and what isn't working, because I think the key with work-life balance that at least I have found, and I am not (laughs) perfect or in any way the arbiter of what needs to happen for life, but I can say from my life, I have learned that if I'm more tuned in to what's working, what's not working, then I'm in a better position to be able to make nuanced changes and flex. You have to change. You have to be adaptable. And that means you have to lean into uncomfortableness. Uh, you have to lean into doing things differently. Even if you don't know it can work, try something new. Again, go with the flow, document, have a journal, uh, you know, a podcast, whatever you can do to be able to document the process so that you you can act appropriately and change up things going forward. Yeah, that's some good tips to follow. (laughs) Get your work and home life balanced. Uh, Yeah. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what's so what's what's the scenario? It's scenario time, guys. Scenario one. Berta Muhad Medal earns a seven-figure salary for a fang company, but spends maybe 30 minutes with his family of seven. Is this the definition of good work-life balance, since he's providing the finances needed to raise his family? <laughs> KJ has thoughts on the matter, as per usual. Uh, I would say there probably is more information that's going to be needed. We don't know in that family of oh. seven... If there are children, is this just like extended family, like grandmothers? Not to say that certain people in certain age groups need less time from others, but 
I think children predominantly need a little bit more of the time and the nurturing than say someone who's in their, you know, not necessarily in that stage of life and doesn't need as much guidance, but is, you know, just kind of every stage comes with different needs and, and, and wants. And so there's that. And then we also don't know if there are children in the family of seven, are they home? Are they in boarding school? Are they away? There's just too many unknowns here. So I would say, A, I need more information. B, quantifiably 30 minutes does seem a little bit abbreviated (laughs) (laughs) but you know it's it's about quality not quantity so he's the kind of person where 30 minutes with him uh, i'm sorry what's his pronoun yeah him um and 30 minutes with him is like and it could be a more meaningful time than an hour or two hours with someone else so need more information but on the surface seems a little bit uh, abbreviated is what All I would right. say and probably more in an unbalanced type of situation but more information needed to fully have a full assessment there okay and mm-hmm. I think everybody could guess my answer in that yeah <laughs> 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 this was pretty. This was pretty on the nose to me. It's like, of course, okay. he's not having a good work life balance. <laughs> this guy's only spending thirty minutes with family and stuff. Again, there's a lot. Of, we don't know what the scenario. I don't scenario even know nothing is. else. This yeah. guy's messed up. <laughs> You are being judgmental right now, and you need to check yourself for your. No, yourself. no, I mean he's messed up to the family, but he's he's good with that work because he's making that cash. But he is making that cash. But he's not good to his family. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I mean he I, he's providing for them, but is he truly? He's not giving them their time and attention. Yeah, 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 because you do this, and then you wonder why they hate you. I mean that's not you can't ask any questions. They can say I don't like you. <laughs> if, if the family says I don't like you to him, he can't say Oh no, I don't know why. I give you all this exactly. cash. Exactly. He can't say anything. Because we know he, he never, they don't know who he is. He's a stranger. It could be just like a beneficiary. Yeah. Scenario two. Chimamanda wanted to put her twins in soccer lessons, but lacked the funds to do so. Would it make sense to take a greeting job at a local superstore to earn the money necessary to put her twins in the soccer lessons? Or would this ruin her work-life balance? So again, I don't, oh man, there's always more questions to be had. Oh boy. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not that deep. I know it's hard that's why people don't like lawyers uh, because uh. we always have questions uh, but I would say ultimately uh, I would wonder is that the best utilization of her time for the money that she's looking to get for the classes right so she could do a greeting job or could she also be at home with the children and do some type of social media job or some type of training job that doesn't require more time away from her children so that the children still get her time and then she's also able to get the funding to be able to to put her twins in soccer lessons so it'd be i'd want to see her resume i'd want to understand what her skill sets are to be able to assess is that the best utilization of her time and her skills and her core competencies to, to make sure that that makes the most sense because more time away from the children, the children ultimately would rather not have the soccer and just have the, their mom, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I would just, I mean, my answer is this would ruin her work life balance it because would. it's going to yeah. take time away from spending with those children and just putting him in the soccer lessons. It might be okay, but I don't know if it's the best. It depends on the person. Are you making soccer stars? Then maybe it's worth it, but I, I mean, don't know. It's if good you're not. exercise, Kalil. I mean, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm just thinking, is it worth it? Because you go into the do this other job, and you really want to do that. That's what you want to tell people you do. That's what you got to think about. Why are you being judgmental on it's that judgmental. type of job? No, I'm not being judgmental. Do you want to tell people? I might want why to tell them. Why is that a part? Why is that a consideration? <laughs> like, <laughs> it should always be a consideration. Any job you take, because no, here's here's the thing, and I, I okay. like this because Dame Dash said it. He said, "Would you the job that you're currently doing? Would you do it if you weren't getting paid?" So I think that's how you should think about jobs that you're doing. That's the that's but the. But I also I know I know everybody. I can't with to you it. to the idea that I just, I well, like someone that has got to be the greeter. Someone has got to clean the toilet. Yes, someone has got to build those, the home. Exactly, but someone's some people like to, to do that. Though. It. Someone's got to be the professor. Some people like right? doing someone's all that stuff. All that, some people like some of those things are enjoyable. It can be enjoyable cleaning a toilet. It can be enjoyable greeting people too. You're being super judgmental. No, it could be, but you got to make sure for the person that's what you want to do. It's like, so that's what I'm saying. More questions because some people are very personable and they want to meet new people every day. So that's a great job for them. But is that great for someone who's trying to spend more time with the children? That's my question. Probably not. She might be in a, a very, you know, sourpuss mood kind of situation. <laughs>
<laughs> so that's not kind of ineffective for the yeah, role. <laughs> yeah, see, you got to make people feel welcome as shoppers. So that's the Correct. fun way of doing that. You are a mess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an important job. Like, I, if I'm not welcome, then should I stay at the store or should I leave? I don't Get know. Get away from me, Kalo. <laughs> You're so messed up. You're not welcome here. Every job You're is an important job. Smack. All I'll say is every job is an important job. Yes. And not everybody wants to do them. That Those are true statements, though. That yeah. I can get behind, yeah. Yeah, see? Scenario three. Guru Sai Prasanth has been working from home for the past few years. He has been able to regain time with his family and friends because of the lack of a commute. An opportunity came up where he could earn double his current salary as long as he is comfortable with a two-hour plane trip each way to work. Would this be a healthy work-life balance? Wow, so that's a really challenging uh, commute (laughs) for work. So again, it would depend on how he is able to use that two-hour plane trip. Can there be any... I don't even know if you can do video conferencing while you're on a plane. I don't believe you can, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not... Oh well, yeah, the data's there. limited on but, planes. But yeah, if if he was still able to spend time even virtually with his family during that plane trip, then it might not be so bad. But if that's a blackout time kind of thing and he can't use the internet, can't read, can't do any, you know, anything productive, then he really has to under Well, like, of course he can read. I mean, you can read anytime, I guess, so anywhere. Maybe he can read and write and stuff, but I mean, yeah, ideally, he would have to decide is that something... What? He came up with great, he can write letters to his family. Because it is 1912. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave me a brilliant idea. While he's on the planes, he can write letters and yeah. he can give that to them to read when he's away and on he, the plane They trip. can read it on the Titanic too, right? <laughs> <laughs> you came up with such a great idea, though. That's, like, brilliant. That's so ingenious. There's probably apps for that, too, where write a letter to your family because you're never there for them. Wow. And that's how you feel about that. Okay. So you Why can, do I feel that way? I'm just saying you can do that so they know how it I is. mean, again, I, mean, I think you're being away. super judgmental. There are people probably listening to this who do do plane trips as a part of their commute. So I don't four think we should make people, though. people feel bad. There are people I know who do buses for four hours. I mean, four hour commutes every day. Yeah. I, there are people in the yeah. tri state area. No, you know, I know. I know what happens. I had a two hour commute in uh, each way. <laughs> so. and, but that's what I'm saying. People could write these letters to their family that's missing them so then Correct. they know how they feel during those commutes. Yeah. And the letter doesn't have to be also long. also send uh, pigeons to deliver these messages. The forget-me-nots, well. yeah. Correct. Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> so. you don't want these people to forget you while you're on your journey because mm-hmm. it's kind of like you're going on a little three-hour tour, so... Yep. Or it's a two-hour tour, technically, I guess. Both With ways. or without the diaper. Yep. So, what's your answer? I mean, if, <laughs> that's, I mean, well, I, no, actually, I can't even, yeah, that's, I can't even touch that. Yeah, we'll just, of course not. I'll leave that one alone, because that's different. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's different. But the the key thing is, oh, so here, the, you would be surprised by this. Mm-hmm. Technically, this could be a healthy work-life balance, because guess what? The person doesn't actually have to sleep. So then if they do, if they don't sleep, then mm-hmm. they can spend all their time with their family when they're home. Exactly. And just die. <laughs> <laughs> Three years too young. Yeah, exactly. So it's actually, they could actually, ba- you could actually have a healthy work-life balance, even though you have a four-hour commute. It's very possible. Just don't sleep. That's my recommendation. Wonderful. That's super sustainable. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. And with that. And I'll, I'll just put this forward because yeah. I always put it forward. My recommendations aren't necessarily things that I would do. <laughs> Correct. So really un- not really productive or helpful. <laughs> no, no, because no people, I'm just, at least I'm being You're honest. You're just putting out the options that no one's taking. But it is <laughs> no, the option. No, though. because I'm yeah. being honest because sometimes there's things that I would recommend, but it's not necessarily what I would make if I was to make the choice in that well, situation. Well, again, if you're dif- you're dif- you're not the same person as someone else. So yes, yeah. But what you yeah, I'm trying to say, kind of like different. if I was in that situation, I would think that would be the best option is to not sleep. But me currently right now is I do like I like to get sleep, so I don't know that would be tough. But if right. I was the him, maybe I could figure it out where I can just sleep the four hours a day because you get two hours going, two hours coming back. So that's what I'll put out there. Mm-hmm. All right. So with that. Ultimately, folks, Woken Free Nation, work-life balance is possible, but circumstances will help 
create nuance in your life as to how you need to establish it for yourself. So we encourage you to make good choices and to make choices that make the sense that will make you happy and help you avoid some of the obstacles that we talked about in this episode. And with that, we are at that time again. It's the coming to the end of our 254th episode of Woke and Free! Quite the episode asking and answering the question of is work-life balance really possible? So, Kalil, what do folks need to do now? Come back next week for the new Woke and Free Wednesday episode. Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation, and make sure you tune in next week for Woke and Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. Exactly. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, we are definitely kind of at capacity for 2022, but definitely hit us up on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com for 2023 programming. That is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. We are active on social, so you can always hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and Pinterest at Woken Free. And all sponsorship and collaboration queries, hit us up on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time.